So, first things first, gentlemen, how are you? Good. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Good. So, before we get into the new record uh, and talk about the music you've been making lately, I'd like to jump back to the beginning quickly. Um, do you remember the first band that the two of you bonded over? Beastie Boys. Yeah, Beastie Boys. How come Beastie Boys? I think there was a couple of reasons why we bonded over the Beastie Boys. It was, um, well, number one, they were always a band that, that uh, kind of didn't have any boundaries. And I think there was like a real heavy, like, kind of... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think there were many reasons why we bonded over the Beastie Boys. I think, number one, they were a band that didn't have any boundaries. Um, there was a heavy like punk and hardcore influence in their music too that I think we really, really liked and really related to. And then I think you could, you could kind of pick out, uh, you know, all three of the Beastie Boys were, you know, characters that were. They were pretty heroic. I mean, yeah, like, their personality. The way they and, dressed, the way yeah. they talked, the way they carried themselves. Just you could just tell they didn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. they were they were our heroes when we were kids. Uh, and what age was this, uh, kind of? Um, so maybe like fifth grade. Yeah, was probably. Like 10? Yeah, and, and moving into like middle school. Okay. 10, 11. Yeah. At this time, what did music mean to the both of you? I, it was just more, for me, it was like discovery. Okay. So you're at the age where you're just starting to... You know, Everything's new. Like when you're go going from being a little kid to going into those early like middle school years, you're just discovering like, what do I like? How do I want to look? And I think that, that they were like, they were heroes of ours. And I think we actually, uh, in the, when they put out the record, um, was it Check Your Head in the 90s? That was the album we really lost. Yeah, and then, then once they put out Check Your Head, uh, then we were just like beyond super fans. And yeah. that was actually our first concert too. Okay. It was the Beastie Boys. Um, so we really bonded over them. and. And then it, you know, tons grew from of, there. Yeah, mm. tons of others. So from that point on, uh, did you always have the same influences, similar tastes, or did you kind of drift apart here and there as well? I think we um, in mostly agreed on. But there were things that but, I liked but, more. I tended to go more towards hip hop. He tended to go more towards like industrial, darker music, punk, metal. So we, we did kind of have different sides of music that we enjoyed. Mm. Yeah, I think he got more into hip hop and I got more into like heavy, heavy music, you know. Mm. And at this point, were you making music yourself? Uh, so we, we, were we started 15. the yeah, we started the band in 1996. So we'd, we I think we had gotten into plenty of music by then. Mm. And so how do you then start, I mean, you grow up with each other, you have the same influences, uh, or similar influences. How do you start uh, writing songs together? How does that go from, from being infatuated with music to, to mm. that creative aspect? I think, you know, at that age, it's, it's like you don't even know it's called songwriting. You just kind of go, let's make up a song. And you're just being... Kids. You, yeah, you're just being kids, you're just imagining. and. Um, and I, at, when we first, you know, the first time we wrote a song, I had, um, I had gotten a guitar and I learned a few chords and wasn't really good enough to play other people's songs. Mm. And we were kind of like, let's just make up our own song. And it kind of started from there. It was like instantly kind of just... I don't think we were particularly good either. I think, like, it's interesting to me how many times could we have stopped, like... It's interesting, like, how many times could we have been met with someone telling us, like, what are you doing? And luckily we were on our own, so we were free to just just do whatever, and, and there was no kind of need to be good. Mm. So we were just trying and experimenting, and it allowed us to, to be free to just try. Well, you say we were alone. What, what do you mean by this exactly? Is it just being the two of you? In the, in it was just the two of us in our own little world. Our, okay. You know, our f family was broken. Parents were busy dealing with kind of that aspect of our life. Mm -hmm. And we were left to our own devices. And I mm -hmm. think that we had our own little world where we were just listening to music all the time and trying to figure out, like, how do they do that? I had this little uh, kind of 
karaoke machine that you could put cassette tapes in and you could plug, um, there were two microphone inputs. So in one, we'd put a mic and in the other, I'd plug my guitar. And we'd write little songs. And we'd write, and then you could put a, you could put a tape in and record it. And we would write little songs. Two track, basically. Yeah, we would we would write little songs and record them. Do just you make do them up? Do you remember any of those? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you to sing them, but um, could you hear in those those early recordings what you what you wanted to do, what you were, were I could getting? Hear, at? I could hear the future. Mm. I could imagine like I could tell that we like. I think right away I could tell that it came naturally to us. And I could tell that like we were gonna be good at this. Like mm. I knew we were just kind of figuring it out, but I was like, yeah, we can do this. Like we, we, this is definitely something we should do because it just kind of really came natural. Mm. And, and well, as you said, Joel, uh, the, it being kind of an escape in a way from, from kind of your surroundings. What, what, how do you look back at those, those formative years of, of being uh, creative, being you know, as an adult and as a parent, I look mm. back at us and I'm really um, I'm f affectionate towards it. You know, I have a lot of affection. I'm proud of it. Um, and I'm impressed because there were so many other things we could have done that, that, that would have been probably a more negative outlet. Mm. Um, but we went to, and that's why I'm so grateful for music. Because it was, if it weren't for those albums that we listened to that uh, ca captured our imagination, we wouldn't have, been, have, have had the want to go and try to create our own little world. And I think that was really the escapism of mm -hmm. trying to create your own, your own world um, that we became obsessed with, that, that was escaping our real life with this fantasy of we'll be in a band and we'll get signed and it'll and take us all away from here. And everything's going to be great. And everything's going to be okay. And I think, like, I look at that and I, and I, and I, and I, I kind of look at it in a fond way as a parent to go, wow, that, you don't think about it at the time, but I look at my own kids and I go, what would they do if they were left on their own? Mm -hmm. They have two parents that are together, that care, that are looking after them, taking care of them. And I think I look at us and I was like, we had to take care of ourselves, we had to look after ourselves, we had to figure out the world together. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have a, necessarily a parent who was going, okay, this is how it works. Okay, you, you do this and then you do that. So we didn't have that, so um, I, we, we always looked to each other, and then music was really the escape. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really nice that we had that, uh, otherwise I don't know what would have become of us. Right. You know, so, um, you know, as, a, as a, an adult with perspective and years behind me, I look at it and go, wow, uh, good yeah. job, and even more, thank God, who knows? I mean, it, is it luck? Is it, did we, did we, did we stumble into it? Um, you can't question how things work out in life. You just have to kind of accept that life has its funny way of working mm -hmm. itself out and, and trust that. And I look at it and I go, wow, that, that was, that was um, incredible that we found music. And, mm -hmm. and forever, I think, I'm personally forever grateful to music, to people who listen to music and you know, participate in the, the, the going to shows and buying albums and, mm -hmm. and per, being a fan of, of bands. Uh, and then uh, to my own band, you know, this, this, we've been together since I was, you know, 15, 16. Um, I think all the bands we love too. And all the bands I love that, cap, that really captured my imagination. And then my own band who we've been together since we were all young and in high school right. and now being uh, grown men, I look at them and, I love them because I wouldn't have the life I have, and I wouldn't have escaped all that without these this group of people. Yeah. Mm. Those those first months or maybe a year when you, when you started maybe performing uh, locally, what were they like? Because I can imagine you mentioned you were in your own bubble a little bit, but but what did you think of of kind of going into music? Did you think, oh, okay, we're just gonna play and then it'll we work out? I really? think we wanted to so bad, but we were a little unsure. I so think we also just wanted to play for anyone, like backyard parties, anywhere we could get, anywhere we could get an audience. Because I felt like we were just hungry to test it out. 
mm-hmm. and, and and share and it, figure it and out, figure it out, and go, what? How's this work? Or you know, and getting in front of a crowd of people and wondering if you could captivate them, testing it, and wondering if you could interest. It was them. like building a plane and then taking it out on the runway, and then each time going back and going, we need to fix this, we mm-hmm. need to fix that, we need to write more songs, we need to, we we should wear something different. We mm-hmm. try to figure it out. So it was like that. It was like it was like the the Wright brothers. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you take the plane out. It doesn't quite fly yet. <laughs> Bring it back. And so we were just trying to play anywhere we well, could. People really seemed to react to that. Oh, this worked. This didn't work. This felt awkward. This felt great. You know. But well, that's an inter- interesting thing you mentioned because uh, you mentioned the 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 artist that you kind of found solace in. When, when, when did you notice that you could have a similar effect on people with your own music? I don't think we noticed that until the first album. Okay. Yeah. We had kind of fans that I were. We hoped we could. Yeah. I think we hoped. And, we could. and I think after that first album, we had a a, a new mission. And that's where the second album came from. Yeah. There was a real message on that. First album was just... Our story. Was just raw self-expression. The second album was really kind of, I think, pointed. You know, and I think we were really starting to kind of go, there's a message here. And I think um, that... This is how I feel about this. Do you agree? Mm. Kind of thing. Who's my... Who who are our people? Mm. It's it's interesting because uh, the the first album uh, did did well, but then the second album exploded. Did, did did you did you expect that being being like you say the album that it was? I don't know that we expected what happened on that record. Um, I think we were just trying to build on this incredible fan base that had just mm. it was born out of the first. We record. were still trying to do something that, that just something we thought was cool too, mm. something we liked. You know, I think that was driving it a lot too. It was like doing something that really made us you know proud and that we liked did you feel like you found the people uh, that you belong to in in a way as as you say did you yes. find your people yeah there's something about us all that there's something about something we can share whether it's a song or a lyric or a moment or a whole record uh with the people that listen to our music that I do feel like kindred spirits I feel like there's some pain we all share and some humor we all share and some self deprecation but then also a want to be special or want to succeed um, we're kind of complex you know it's dy- it's dynamic when you think about the things we are the things we aren't um, and learning how to be okay with all of it um, I mm-hmm. think that's been the journey and I think that there's a similar there is like a thread with with us and and everyone who Mm -hmm. actually feels our music.